people dismiss us as a, as a third rate Jethro Tull copy and I was like thank you very much you know, the, the great band the highest honor so I'm here with uh, Mr. Mickey that's right <laughs> Michael Ackerfeld how are you not bad not bad how are you Good, very, very good. Excited for the show tonight. It's going to be a, a good one. So I wanted to kind of, you know, go in um, and talk about the new album in Cowder Venom. So, you know, obviously with the Swedish and English uh, variations in language, do you believe that, you know, music actually transcends language and it actually doesn't really matter what language it's in, you know, in terms of lyrics? Yeah, I would say so. But there was a time where I... I, I didn't think that was the case i was kind of you know shying away from when i was younger from music that was sung in a language that i didn't understand i'd like to think to be honest that i matured enough to to be able to enjoy music uh, without understanding what, what 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 the singer is singing about so yeah i would say so but i i do perfectly understand if someone has a problem with say our Swedish version because they won't understand what I'm singing most people of course we have an English version if, if it, the Swedish one is too much for you but for me I, it's it doesn't matter anymore okay. but there was a time when it did okay so I've heard you know in various different interviews that you've done that you've said the Swedish one is the better one <laughs> so what why is that well for me it's like doing uh, the same thing twice. I mean the incense and the initial feeling that you had about something when you do it the first time is different than when you're trying to basically copy mm -hmm. what you just did. Uh, and that's what I did with the English version because the vocal lines were already there uh, and I, I wanted the same vocal lines pretty much. So it was a case of me trying to copy what I did from the Swedish version. So that's the first one and in the beginning it was only meant to be a Swedish version, no English version. It might be the, the, the case of me just finding it a bit more interesting in that sense because we've never done that before, mm -hmm. really. So uh, I heard lots of people who only heard the English version, and that, really? yeah, yeah, lots, lots of people who play, you know, that's their version, you know. So uh, I'm not going to say, well, you know, that's shit. You know, it's still a good, <laughs> it's a good. It just that my version is the Swedish one. Okay. Obviously, you know, you're uh, very much a creative kind of person and, and you must really kind of go through quite a quality control in terms of when you're writing something. But, you know, much like a painter, when do you think that the painting is actually finished? That's a good question. Um, it's almost, it's difficult to answer too because some, sometimes when I look back at some of the stuff, I don't remember writing it. It's almost like you're in a... I won't go all, all pretentious, but it's it's kind of like trans-like in that sense that you just do things, you know. Like people have their habits. Why do you brush your teeth after the shower and not before you take a shower or whatever? You know, those kind of things that you do for no particular reason. And that's basically how I, I write music. I don't sit around like, I did this because of that and it's finished because because of this, you know. It's just finished. You you know you you feel it. But so obviously, I could break down every song that I've written and question: Does it have to finish there? No, probably not. It could probably go on, or maybe it should finish earlier. Mm -hmm. But it's it's just a gut feeling, I think. Uh, and I know, like I I sometimes I work for a long time with with uh, specific songs, and I don't find the right kind of piece of puzzle, uh, puzzle to finish it. Uh, until much later and it's like oh there it is thank you you know and but i don't know why uh, speaking of gut feelings and, and things like that i feel that you know heavy as a definition of something is very much a, a state of mind would you agree with that <laughs> yeah well when we're talking music i mean for me it's i've been attacked over the years you know for, for being not not being heavy you know which i can i understand you know i wouldn't have thought the same when i was younger mm. that that's not really heavy music not true. exactly but <laughs> since then i've found you know like nobody can say for instance and not comparing mozart if you you know that's a heavy experience if yeah. you know what i mean and the music is heavy 
And if somebody says, it's, 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 you know, like, because that's how people talk about heavy music, mm -hmm. like something really good and tough, you know, like, and it's cool. And when it goes into emotional heavy, it's like, w what's that? You know, like, does that count? Or, mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think we're, you know, sometimes we're uh, traditional heavy, as in a metal heaviness. But most of the time I like to, like the music that, that we write, uh, write and, and record is heavy, sometimes in the traditional sense and sometimes in the sense of something, uh, something else. Mm -hmm. Like a, a feeling, like a heavy emotion, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Uh, but that explanation doesn't really come across, I think, to people who have made up their mind that we're not heavy. You know, and that's fine. You know, understand? I completely understand it. It's just that my idea of heaviness has changed over the years, mm -hmm. where I sometimes feel that traditional heavy sounds weak. Not even heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know what I mean. Um, and uh, for that reason, it it kind of lost its luster. Okay. From when I was a kid, like the heavier, the better. But for, also for me, because I'm older, you know, when I speak heavy, I speak slow, yeah. like doomy music. That's what heavy <laughs> means, not grindcore. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm kind of confused as to the subject of what, what heavy means. Yeah. I wanted to um, address the voices on In Cauda Venenum as well. So obviously I know the, the front cover is a homage to King Diamond and... Ish. Yeah. Ish, right? And um, do the voices create a sense of narrative or what, what's, what's the... Well, they do to the songs, but in a way when I break down that it's like it's not that what's been said, like what the spoken word section, doesn't necessarily relate to the lyrics later on. I mean, in some some of the songs they do I had more actually than what really? ended up on the record yeah I had more but I couldn't get it cleared with the people who who so to speak owned it okay uh, but the first song uh, Dignity has a speech from uh, one of the former prime ministers of Sweden who's now he was assassinated in 86 and he's a big political icon for especially for social democrats and he like a legend, if you know what I mean. And he's in there, and he, what he's saying, yeah, you could relate it to the lyrics in a way, I guess. Mm -hmm. You could find, like, I could fool people saying it's because of this and that. That's why he's on there. But he serves more as an intro to, to the whole record mm -hmm. rather than uh, to that song. Again, I can't really explain why I put it, put it in there. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, again, gut feelings, like, need something, what? And I found something, it's like, you know, it's easy to manipulate it. You mm -hmm. know, put, put, you could, you, I could have like cart, like uh, Tom and Jerry, cartoon noises or whatever. Put it in, manipulate it, and make it sound dark. Okay. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in that sense, that if you watch a horror film and put happy music on, it's not as scary, and the other way around. Mm -hmm. So I also think that you know, um, obviously, I think was it the bass that kind of broke during. Is it Hjartet Het Vanden Jor? Vanden Jor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's called in English. It's called Heart in Hand. Heart in Hand. Yeah. See, I, I don't even know the English titles. <laughs> but there you Sorry, go. I jumped down your throat. Yeah, it's fine. But yeah, that, the the bass did break. I mean, it's it's uh, it's just one of those things, you know, that happens when 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 you record, and that's what we played. One of them, old Paul McCartney. Uh, Mendes yeah. played one of them, Paul McCartney. I'm airplaying the wrong way now because it's Paul McCartney. Uh, Hofner basses, you know, like, looks like a violin, and it just started like, and I was like, oh, keep it, save it, save it. You know, for some reason, again, I don't know why. Okay. It's just that I hear music in in things that are not traditionally uh, traditional music. I hear music in silence so that like space in between songs is also kind of like music mm -hmm. yeah. it's important that it's a millisecond it's like if it's a millisecond wrong it's like oh no no just not quite you know, just a notch <laughs> uh, but yeah for that, that noise I just thought it was in a perfect part because we're cha chaotic part anyways you know yeah it added something it's like there's beauty and imperfection type thing very much so. Yeah, I don't like perfection. 
I don't believe in perfection. No, what, well, some of the greatest albums are based on imperfection. I think. I think so too. I mean, you want you str- like we when we play tonight, for instance, we strive for perfection, <laughs> but we never get there, never. But it's again, it's not important really. Like the people on the records, we try to like if there's some mist- like obvious mistake, we do another take most of the time but also when I'm playing like recording my guitars and I feel in my fingers that I'm playing it's not right yeah I look around the room it's nobody noticing I continue I don't say don't <laughs> say anything I can hear it it's not there you know but you strive for perfection but most of the time you're not gonna end up with anything perfect I don't really know what perfection is to mm. be honest even though you're a perfectionist I'm not well I'm a I'm a perfectionist in, in that sense that I sometimes want imperfection. Yeah. <laughs> the an, an oxymoron. I guess. I guess that's what you could call it, yeah. So, um obviously I know, you know, earlier on with Catatonia you helped out with Jonas and everything, but would you ever consider doing a side project with Jonas later? We have never talked well we kind of talked about he was on about doing a solo record for a while ago and he said i I want you you on it and i was like of course i'll play it whatever just tell me what to play and i'll play but uh, we haven't talked about doing a a project in that sense that we're both writing new music the two of us um i think we're i mean he's my best friend but like musically i'm not sure where we would meet up really Mm -hmm. he's into for some reason he's kind of gone back to death metal and he also has the side to him where he wants to listen to uh, lo-fi country music wow which he he, he, over the years terrorized he's been terrorizing me with with that stuff (laughs) he's like he's wearing you down yeah that's when my perfection came in it's like that's (laughs) too far off if you know what I mean (laughs) but he likes that stuff and Oddly enough, I kind of started like, uh, maybe I learned from him that imperfection is, there's something there. Uh, But no, we haven't really talked about doing a, a side project, really. Obviously, Opeth, you know, has a, a very large impact in the world of metal. But what would you say is Opeth's constant over the years that you've had? I'd like to think that we've constantly been uh, a little bit out, out uh, outsiders. That we haven't really b- we belong to a scene, but within that scene, we've been alone. If mm-hmm. you know what I mean, if it's just like easy to categorize us as prog metal. Or, whatever we've been over the years but within the scene I always felt that we don't have any peers if that's the right word Mm -hmm. in that sense that we it sounds really cocky when I say it but I mean it in in a mild mannered way we don't have competition in that sense we always had our own scene and whenever somebody kind of picked up on that scene then we changed into something else if you know what I mean so there are bands around that would probably cite us as influences and might sound like a specific era of what we've been doing over the years or something. But uh, uh, I think we've always been uh, alone. To some extent, underdogs. We never have had a straight path. We never had that overnight success. Uh, we never played it safe. And we never... I mean, we're popular I guess to a certain extent but I, 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 sometimes I'm even baffled myself I don't really know what we are but I, I know that we are unique mm. that if if we stop playing for instance there would be a void then yeah. I think I think <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I think we're fairly fairly unique for good and bad yeah. well thank you so much for uh, having a chat with us mm.